Bereshit, the story of Genesis, the story of creation, is so much more, friends. It's so much more than a story of the formation of heavens and earth. It is a story, when you read it, it's a story of the creation of the very first relationship. The title of the message today is Find Me Somebody to Love, David. You know, there's a song about that. Is the story of the creation of the very first relationship ever recorded in the Word of God between God and man. And in this chapter, chapter 1 and chapter 2, we see the purpose, the purpose for entire creation. The purpose for humanity. The purpose for mankind. I'm going to stop the suspense. And I'm going to tell you what's the purpose. In case you wonder what's the purpose of all of this. The purpose of creation is you and I. We are... You and I are the main stars in this story. Here is the way Paul Philip Levertov, which I still drawn to, wrote it so beautifully when he says, Man has been created by God in order that he may finish what God has deliberately left unfinished. Not that God needs the help of his creatures, but it is love which causes him to impact his own nature to the work of his hands. In order that man should have the privilege and the joy of becoming his fellow worker in this world. In natural as well as in spiritual Life. The entire story of creation is not about the animals. It is not about the plants or the stars or the skies or the water. It is only about one thing. And one thing only. And it is this. It is God's desire for Intimacy. Let me say it again. The entire story of the creation is about one thing and one thing only. God desire for intimacy. He could surely create it. Think about it. He's God all powerful. Surely He's all powerful. Surely He could have created perfect beings without will of their own. Couldn't He? Couldn't he create a robots that just have no will? He could create those perfect beings without sin in a perfect world. But instead, God chose to create beings with will of their own. With abilities to choose life. With abilities to choose blessings. So that we can choose Him. The reason that God has given us the power to choose from the beginning of time is that so we can be free to have perfect relationship with Him with great intimacy by choice. The story of creation is about God's greatest desire. Not man's greatest desire, but God's greatest desire. And God's greatest desire is to create those beings who will love Him, who will adore Him, 
out of choice and not out of force. The entire story of creation is about God's desire to have those people who love Him. He say, find me somebody to love. But I'm not going to force it. I'm going to give you a choice. How many of you saw? You know, the very first interview when Gilad Shalit got out of jail this week. He was with this Egyptian. And here he's answering the question. And you clearly can tell he doesn't want to answer those questions, right? And then they show you a zoom out. If you saw the zoom out of the picture. And what do you see? Two Hamas terrorists holding a gun like that to his head. Did you guys see those pictures? Oh, yeah, that is a free will. Here you go. Answer the question. Have Hamas been treating you well? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They've been treating me real good in jail. Did they ever bother giving me glasses? They treated me so good. Do you love Hamas? Uh-huh. I love Hamas. There was no free will. There was no free choice. God could have created us like that. God have, could have created us easily as yes men. Uh-huh, uh-huh, God. But no, He wanted to create beings who will love Him out of choice and not out of force. It was Archibald McLeish. McLeish. He's a great American poet. And I really drawn to a poet that he wrote, a poem that he wrote. And here's what he says. He says, what is freedom? What is real freedom, he asked. He said, freedom is the right to choose. The right to create for oneself the alternatives of choice. God has given us choice. He has given us freedom. But he said, I sure hope you're going to pick me. This is my greatest desire. For you to love me. But the love when I'm going to hold this to your head is not much of love. The story of creation is a story of an incomplete not imperfect, incomplete world that was, that was made this way in order for us. Are you ready? I'm going to tell you the secret today. The real secret. I'm going to show you some amazing things. I'm going to share with you a secret today. This world was created imperfect in order for us to labor hand in hand with God to complete the work. Can God complete the work today? You better believe it. He can snap a finger. He doesn't even need to snap a finger. He can just think it and it's done. In a blink of an eye, everything can be done. Messiah can be done. And we have the perfect fellowship with Him. However, beloved, God does not care about the end product only, but He cares more about the middle of the story. What's happened between the beginning and the end is what God cares about. The middle of the story has to do with the main stars. You and I, entire humanity, our daily struggles, our daily victories, our daily issues as we go for it. Not just as representative of Him, but as co-laborers with the mighty one of Israel building the world. God has left the world unfinished so you and I can come and build it together. I still remember when I was living in the kibbutz. You know what I was my my, my They left us with those avocado trees, to paint those trees. Oh my gosh. And I was me and another guy in an AM radio, and we're painting the trees so they won't get cracked. And let me tell you something. By the end of this day, and this is somebody I didn't even knew, we were the best of friends. 
We were the best. Because we call labored all day. I carry the jug. You carry the AM radio. I carry the AM radio. You carry the jug. You take this. I take that. And we work together. Don't you know, notice when you work together, especially those of you who work together on a, what I call um, a outdoor, outdoor activity, work in the land. It's, it's developed some sort of camaraderie with you. Friends, God has not made the world a, a, a complete place, so you and I, you are the main star of the show, can come with God. Not under God only, but with God can come and finish what God has set before us. That is the story of creation. And through this process of walking with God, you love Him because you work with Him every day. You become closer and closer and closer with Him. I'm going to show you incredible things in the Scriptures today. Here is what it says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. It said, this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the heaven and the earth, now no shrub has yet appeared on the earth, and no plant has yet sprung up. For the Lord God has not sent rain, on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed, breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Now the Lord God has planted a garden in the eastern Eden and he put there the man that he had formed. Those are some of the most important verses in the story of creation. I want you to notice two components with me in those verses for this perfect relationship that God desired and made us for. This is the reason that you and I created. I am talking to you about something pretty big. Today, about the reason we are here. That's a pretty big deal. Why are we here? We see a per perfect picture in those verses of the covenant that God created with all humanity. Notice at the, the beginning of the scripture that there it says clearly that there is nothing that is growing. Nothing is growing. It says so. Nothing is growing in the beginning of the story of creation. It says so. And why it is that nothing is growing, friends? It is because God is a sovereign God. And without God in the middle, nothing bound to grow. It doesn't matter. Without God in the middle, nothing bound to to grow. End of story. But also note that the scripture tells us that there was a second part to it. Nothing was growing because there was no rain. But he says that nothing was growing also. Read the words carefully. Because there was nobody to do what? Nobody to work the land. There was nobody to work the land. There are two components here. Let's look at how God, what God has done in this covenant, the very first covenant. God has done His part of this covenant. The word says in the Hebrew, it says that He brought, uh, in the English, I don't like the translation, He used the word vapor. He brought vapor, like a vaporizing cloud, to get the land ready. He brought a vapor as God to get the land ready. The word in the Hebrew language is the word vehishka. Vehishka. And what's the word vehishka speak of? He speak of a ground that is thirsty 
A ground that is dry. It's really saying there was nothing growing because the ground was thirsty. The ground was dry. The word, the heshka, talking about the type of watering that you do, that it's not a heavy rain that comes down from the heaven, some heavy rain. The word vaishka, you know, you sometimes you go with a gardening hose. That's not vaishka. You know what vaishka is? When you put the cool, gentle mist when you go to your flower bed and go tss, and it's gentle, you know, it's kind of feel good. You know, when you go to the, all those parks and you have the, all this misty stuff come and it feels so good. It's a gentle, gentle water is coming. But it says that he went and individually go and water each planet, plant. He went and did water here, water by, by, he picked each piece of, it almost says, as he picked each piece of ground, and he went to gently wash it, gently wash it, gently wash it, preparing the ground, preparing the ground. Take the hardness out of the ground, okay? He didn't shower the land with some heavy rain, but you know, when you have this misty, it's soaky. It's getting the ground ready. This word here for vaporizing, the Hebrews speak of a gentle mist that God has sent to do what? To prepare the ground. People always ask this question. Friend, this is important today. The next three weeks will be important messages. People always ask the question, how do you know if the decision that you're about to make is the right one or not. How do you know if I, you are or I am in the center wheel of God? You know, we always ask this question. The answer is quite clear, friends. You don't need to go further than Genesis 2. When you are working into God's will, there will be soft ground that is set before you. Amen? Ground that is ready to do what? What the verse says? Though we said there was no man to work on the ground, God says. There was nobody to work on the ground. It will be ground that is ready to be worked on. You want to know if you're in the middle of God's will or not? If you're in the middle of God's will, there will be soft ground. Are you guys with me? This is, this is the story of creation. This is why God created us. The second part of the verse in Bereshit, in Genesis, states that, that the second part of this puzzle, of this love relationship, in completing God's creation, is due to the fact, and it says, that there was nobody to do what? To complete their work. There was nobody to work the ground. Friends, I think you see it right now. Without any workers to work the soil, the rain that was shower showered from above from by God is meaningless. And somebody needs to be able to work the land. There is an important principle right here in Genesis chapter 2. God says, I can bring all the rain I can bring. But if there is nobody to work the ground, we cannot work to the completion of what God has given us. God created you and I in this love story. This is a love story. God created you and I, beloved, to be the workers and to work the land and to complete God's creation. The process of rain, those of you who have been here too in Sukkot when I teach about it, represent rain, water represent the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, our faith. And the process of working the land, it's called here in the Hebrew, Avodat Adama, working the land, is the process that happens together, not alone, 
together with God and not aside from God. You see, the ground has to be soft first. And then when the ground is soft, God says, I created you. Come along. Notice he brought the rain before he created man. That's what he says. He brought the rain. He set the ground soft before he created man. God's greatest desire for us today is to be, you and I, is to be this worker and this farmer and to complete his creation by working the land and what ultimately when you work in a soft land ultimately you will produce fruit this is the reason that the very first i'm going to show you another mystery now this is the reason that god gave us the very first commandment ever given to men in this chapter and he said, and God blessed them and said to them, Pru be fruitful and multiply. And fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the air. What is he talking about here, Pru or Bu? He's not talking about just having children. That is not what he's talking about. He's talking about the fact that he said, I said the ground. The ground is soft. The ground is ready to be worked. Now come alongside with me. Because you're going to choose to love me if you work with me. Because you're going to depend on this rain. Work with me. Love me. Choose to love me. This is the greatest commandment. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. It's right here in the scriptures. The commandment to be fruitful and multiply. The very first commandment is commandment to choose to love him. To choose to love him. What an amazing, you see the Torah in Genesis. The blessing of Pru or Bu has to do with the heavenly mitzvah. To farm the soil that is ready. Not any soil, not any soil. You can do a lot of good work, but it's without God. And that's going to be hard. Not any soil. God's soil. The soul that he went and he put rain on. God is basically saying to us, Will you work this ground with me today? God does not say, Will you work this ground for me? But he rather say, Will you work with me? Hand by hand, will you work with me? Will you help me, God asked today? Will you help me today to complete the work, James? Will you help me today, God says, to complete the work, Mark? Will you help me to complete my work, your, our work, David? Will you help me to partner Because I, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to work with you. Not because I'm not capable of completing the work myself, God says. I can do the work myself without the help of anybody. But because I want to have the relationship with you. The term in the Hebrew language, oh, now you're looking at those verses completely Differently. The term that is used here in, in, in the main text in Genesis 2 to work in the land is the term avodat adama. Bibli biblically speaking, avodat adama has three parts to it. And they repeat twice a year. They repeat twice a year. Isaiah said those. He said, give you ear and hear my voice. Attend and hear my speech. Is the plowman never done with plowing to sow? With the opening and harrowing of the ground? In Hebrew, there are three steps to this idea of work of the land. One of them called harish. It's when you take 
you know, a donkey or something, and you make the, you turn the soil. But you see, the soil is soft because God has brought rain. The second part is Zri'ah, put the seeds in the ground. And the third one called Asif, the gathering, collecting the work. God used Avodat Adama, the term Avodat Adama in Genesis 2 here, to work the soil, all three of those. He referred to all three in order. He's saying that it is that he is in the harish, he is in the plowing, he will be there. When you are plowing, he will be there. This is the hardest step, the plowing. How do I know? We have been plowing at Avata Miss Synagogue for the last six years. It's the hardest step. And by far, all the obstacles has to be removed. I can tell you a miracle after a miracle that we have experienced the last six years. God has removed huge obstacles for me to be able to give you this message today. But if you are in a soft ground, He will remove the obstacles. He will. You better believe it. However, He's saying that the ground will be soft because it brings this soaking rain. It does not mean that the things will magically appear just because the ground is soft, okay? Still, he says, somebody has to do the work. The work still has to get done. But it does mean that this gentle favor, the Ruach HaKodesh, this this mist that come is the gentle favor it's the holy spirit will be over this will be over those things the second step is the step called zriya which is talking about taking your seeds and putting them in the ground he speaks all the great and wonderful seeds that represent in the Besorah. This seed is the good news, friends. The seed is not Judaism. The seed is the good news. It's the good news that is the seed. There is a good seed. And this seed, his name is Yeshua. There is a seed. But in order for a seed to bear fruit, it has to be planted in the right place. The seed is Yeshua. I can look back and speak over the last six years. We planted hundreds. No, I planted personally hundreds. I know we have planted thousands of seeds. And since this is the process that will repeat itself and repeat itself, we are to do it over and over again. Think about the Jewish calendar. You, plant, you, you, you put seed to the ground twice in a year, not once. Do not give up today on planting the seeds if you are willing to plow first. If you are not willing to plow, do not think about planting seeds. But if you are willing to plow, do not give up on planting seeds, friends. God said in Genesis 2 that He will be there side by side to help you by being your greatest partner in this love movie. That is Genesis. Are you guys with me? Am I the only one to get emotional about this? The last step, I want you to listen carefully because I think really the next three messages will be some of the most important messages for you to hear. The last step is Asif. The greatest Asif for us is Jews and Gentiles who sitting and taking part of Messianic synagogue is the fact that all of Israel will be saved. And one day they will mourn on the, the one who they pierce, as Zechariah tells us. 
There is a harvest come. The question is, are you going to take part of the harvest or not? When God speaks here in Genesis 2 about Avodat Adama working the land, He's talking about the order of plowing, of putting the seeds, and even gathering it. He said, I will be there. I will be there. But somebody got to work the land. It's not going to be me. That's going to be my partner, my best friend. That is you. Beloved, you see, God could have made all of these things happen without you and I. Can we agree on that? God does not need us to make this. But He chose to create us to complete His work. He chose to create us to complete this work. Paul Philip Leverton wrote this. He said, those are some men, there, there are some men who love God so much for His own sake, out of choice, for the divine sparks which are, sp- which are scattered in the world, in men and in nature, and tie to bring them back to the source. The process that Paul Philip Levertop speaks of here is Avodat Adama, working the land. The reason that God created you. He did not just create you for the sake of creating you. He created you for the freedom to choose to partner with the one mighty one of Israel. And I tell you today, choose to partner with Him. It will be the best partnership that you could ever invest in. Yeshua said this so much better when He says in Matthew, speaking about the day of creation. I will read it to you from the New Daily translation. He says this. He says, He spoke to them in, He spoke to them at linked with parables saying, The sower went out to sow a seed. As he sowed, some of the seeds fell on the road, and the birds came and ate it. There was some that fell on a rocky place that there was not much soil. And it sprouted quickly because it had no deep soil. When the sun shone, it was scorched and dried up because it had no roots. There was some that fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and crowded it out. There were some that fell on the good soil and bore fruit 100 times, another 60, and another 30. Whoever have ears, let him hear. And then listen to the rest of it. The Talmudim approached him and said, Why is it that you speak to them in such parable? He answered and said, Because to you it is given to know the secret of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it was not given. Yeshua gave this parable here about the greatest secret of the kingdom of heaven. Starting back, he is referring in this parable to Genesis chapter 2, friends. In this great parable, Yeshua calling us, you and I, he's not calling us the farmer, and he uses uh, the term D, ha zorea. Ha zorea. D sower. The point of this entire story, friends, of Yeshua is not the seeds 
Because those are the same seeds. But rather the fact that there is one who is a sower. And the sower is not Yeshua. The sower is you and I. This comes back to the very first commandment in the word of God. Be fruitful and multiply. In some reality, some seeds are going to fall on bad, bad places. I can look today six years. Some of the seeds that I planted fell on a really bad places. Do I regret that? No, I do not regret it. Not at all. I do regret not listening to God and going to the place that are the soft, soft ground. And I'm telling you today, take a lesson from this. Do not invest your time when there is no good ground. When there is no rain. But when the seed hit that land that Yeshua called here in the Hebrew language, Adama Tova. Lovely. Pleasant, good, fruitful, eat well, produce much fruit, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. I'm just about done. Last week I spoke to you plainly from Proverbs 6 6 about our circumstances. About the little ant that God says, go and learn from the little ant. I spoke to you about our situation with our building. Really, we can say the unclarity with the future of the synagogue. I want to tell you today that each and every one of you who have ears today, has the potential and a calling not only to be watered yourself today with this gentle vapor, but also to become this great sower. Hand by hand with the Master, this great story ends because you are the great sower. When God said, I wonder who's going to work the land. He turned around and created and breathed life in His image, in His likeness to create us so we can become the great sower working with the mighty one of Israel. And let me tell you something in closing. You are the great sower. And that does not depend at the rabbi. It does not depend on a building. It does not depend on men or institutions. It depends on your willingness to work the land that God has given you by plowing, sowing, and gathering. And that's it alone. I want to pray specifically for the land that God has given each one of you today.